Hey, this is John with Forward Talk. Welcome to the episode today. Welcome to the channel. If you have not yet subscribed, please take the opportunity to uh, do that. Our next uh, level of subscribers is uh, going to be 700. If you could help us get there, we would greatly appreciate it. So hit that subscribe button. Also hit the notification bell and uh, share this episode with someone that you think might enjoy it. So some of the things that we're going to be talking about today is how we interact with fellow believers. Uh, I'm going to use a new story <clears throat> on Alistair Begg as an example of kind of what I'm talking about, but applying that in the life of a believer in a local context and then in just a, a local church context and then in just a general Christian context. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up to First um, Peter chapter 4. And take a look at some verses there in First Peter chapter four. I actually preached on this a couple Sundays ago at our church, and um, I wanted to share that information on uh, the channel today. Before we go any further, if you would like to support our ministry and what we're doing, both with the channel, uh, our education, church planning, all the things that we have going related to ministry, if you would like to support that, you can. Uh, check out the link in the show notes to uh, both Patreon and um, Cash App, and we would appreciate any donations uh, that you could give to support the ministry. But there's an incredible verse in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse number 8, as Paul is addressing uh, the Jewish believers with his letter here in 1 Peter, and he tells them to above all things. Have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Now, um, he's, he actually makes the, the incredible statement of above all things have fervent charity. Now, there is, a, there is a context, a historical context that lies behind Paul's writing here of, of suffering and um, and the willingness and the ability as Christians to suffer the way that Christ did. But he makes the statement in verse number seven, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And so Peter is here warning the Jews, the Jewish believers, perhaps by extension all Christians, that the end of all things is at hand. There was an impending judgment that was coming. Now, without going into a great deal of argumentation on this point, I'm just going to tell you what I believe about it. And uh, if you want to comment and fight with me in the comments, uh, that will be fine. But I think the end of all things that Peter is talking about here is uh, because he's writing particularly to a Jewish audience and the fact that um, the Roman Jewish war was, was in its consummation and the destruction of Jerusalem uh, was not to, was to follow not too long after Peter wrote this epistle, and so I think that Peter has the back in his mind in the backdrop the destruction of Jerusalem in AD seventy, and so the end of all things is the end of the Jewish system of worship, the temple, the end of all things that Jews held dear to them in their in their religious history and with the temple and all that that implied. So I think this is what, it's the end of the age. It was the end of, a, of, of an aeon, not the end of the cosmos. You can see that language in Matthew chapter 24 as Jesus predicts the destruction of Jerusalem. So I think that's the background. And so what Peter is doing here is he is he is talking to believers about this this impending judgment, this time of turmoil, chaos, and tribulation. And he is telling them to be sober and to watch unto prayer, but above all things, fervent charity among yourselves. Now, this is incredible to me that what he is saying to them is that in this time of testing, in these unusual situations where you are under persecution, and perhaps in the minority in the culture, you need one another like never before. 
and to fervently love one another above all things. Now, he didn't say above all things. Uh, make sure they hold all the same convictions you do, every doctrine exactly the way you do, every uh, standard the way that you do. Not above all things keep doctrinal unity or purity. He said, however, above all things have fervent charity among yourselves. What kind of charity? How fervent is the charity to be? It's a charity that's so strong that it can cover a multitude of sins. Why? Because in the context that he's dealing with, there is going to be pressure and temptation on believers. And perhaps some of them under this high pressure situation is going to is going to uh, make perhaps some bad decisions, and maybe some of them will even defect from the faith. And uh, in, in light of the destruction of Jerusalem idea, let's go to Matthew 24 real quick, and I will point out something uh, to you there as well. We we've often heard we've often heard the phrase that. You know, the love of many, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And we, we've we preached that, and we've taught that in the context of Jesus is coming. I was taught it in the context of we, we are approaching the tribulation, the end of time. And because things are going to get so bad, people are going to stop loving God. They're going to fall out of love with God. So their love for God is going to, is going to wax cold. But let's look at this in context. When we jump up to uh, verse 9, Matthew 24 and verse number 9, starting in here. So they shall deliver you up to be afflicted. They shall kill you. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then many shall be offended. Get this. They will betray one another. They shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And so here he says it. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Now notice in the context, the relationship that's in play. It's not a human to divine relationship. Rather, it is human to human relationships. It's about betrayal. It's about one believer or it's about one person betraying another person. And so the love waxing cold in this high pressure situation, which I think he's talking again about the destruction of Jerusalem. And uh, so in this high pressure situation, he is telling believers that because iniquity will abound, the love of many will wax cold. They might betray each other in self-interest and in interest to self and to, to preserve themselves and their family they might be tempted to betray one another because their love had waxed cold. And so with what I think is the same context and background, Peter here tells believers, above all things, keep fervent charity one toward another. And he says, for charity covers a multitude of sins. So in this high pressure situation where people are tempted uh tempted to make maybe some bad decisions tempted to make some some bad choices he said the thing that's going to keep the church the church the thing that's going to preserve in these situations is going to be your commitment to fervent love no matter what the cost and no matter the situation so Peter here is also quoting from, I think, Proverbs 10 and verse 12, where he said, hatred stirreth up strifes, but love or charity covers all sins. So what he's, the, the kind of sins that he's talking about here is set in contrast to strifes or divisions that are stirred up by hatred. And so when high pressure situations among believers create tensions and adversity to the point to where... Uh, we could be tempted to have divisions among ourselves and to turn on one another. Paul says, instead of letting hatred highlight uh, highlight strifes and divisions, he said, let let love cover. 
Let love cover a multitude of sins. In those situations, we need to let one another know, I've got you covered. Even if you don't perform perfectly, I have you covered. Even if you make a bad decision in this tough situation, I got you covered. Love covers a multitude of sins. Hate highlights division. Love covers failures and sins. In the context of of our uh, togetherness and oneness and relationship with one another as believers. So brothers and sisters, as believers, let me exhort and encourage you today. Cover your brothers and sisters. Cover your family. Cover your your spouse, your children, your your people that you go to church with as pastors. Cover your saints. Don't, Don't let intense pressure and situations from other fellowships and churches and groups cause you to uh, create strifes and divisions in your own church, trying to appease other people and other churches and other dynamics. No, have fervent charity, cover one another. Pastors cover saints, saints cover pastors. I'm not talking about things that, that are immoral or illegal or whatever. I'm talking about in the context of division, where hate wants to stir up strifes. But love covers, charity covers a multitude of sins. And a situation with Alistair Begg, many of you may or may not, I don't know how many of you will know who Alistair Begg is. But anyway, in his particular demographic of of Christianity, he has been a solid, he's a conservative um, preacher, Uh, he's reformed, he, he, uh, in his sphere, he has been revered and, and honored as one of the most faithful preachers in his his community of Christianity. Well, a couple months ago on a, on his radio show, he advised a grandmother in a particular situation to attend her grandchild's uh, LGBTQ plus uh, wedding. And, um, and even though he made it clear to the grandmother um, that she should make clear to her grandchild that she disagreed with the life choice that they were making, that she disagreed with the lifestyle, that 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 grandchild understood the gospel. So he wasn't abdicating any of that. He just simply told the grandmother that she was it was okay in in this particular set of circumstances for her to attend the wedding. Now, you don't have to agree with that advice, but Alistair Begg has also, just right before that um, episode on his radio show, he also made some very strong statements that if it meant uh, him going to jail in, uh, for advising uh, people in same-sex relationships to to quit and to repent of that sin and to encourage them to live in accordance with a biblical ethic that he would go to jail. He would he would be willing to go to prison for that conviction because he believes that's what Scripture says, and so there is no for him there is no um, no getting around that. But that wasn't sufficient for the group that he ran with, as well as many other people. Many other Christians that that aren't Alistair Beck's particular denomination, but because he simply, after forty years of what they would call faithful ministry, and this is the terminology many of those those YouTube YouTubers and ministries have been using about Alistair Beck, forty years of faithful ministry, he makes one piece of advice. He publishes one piece of advice, and forty years of ministry is down the tubes. 40 years of ministry is absolutely gone for these guys. They're calling him woke. They're calling him a, they're calling him not a charismatic. They're calling him uh, a compromiser. They are calling him a heretic. Every name in the book that you can call somebody, they they are calling Alistair Begg. Over one comment, one piece of advice in in 40 years of ministry. So the, not only were they unwilling to cover a multitude of, of sins, a multitude of issues with Alistair, they couldn't even cover they couldn't even cover one issue with Alistair Begg. Their, their love and charity for him did not cover anything whatsoever. And so 
maybe disagree, uh, disagree publicly and strongly with the advice. But even from these guys that are criticizing him, they acknowledge that Alistair Begg still maintains a strong, solid, what they would call a strong, solid sexual biblical ethic. But because he had, he advised this one grandmother in this one situation to attend a wedding, they're willing to throw out his entire ministry and completely discard him as a minister and a person and an individual. And man, I've seen that happen so, so many times uh, where this has happened to various preacher friends and even to myself in, in some, on some scale. And so uh, love covers a mul multitude of sins. It ought to be way more difficult than that to throw away someone's life to throw away someone's influence, to, to disregard or disfellowship or to cast off a fellow believer. It ought to be way more difficult than that, especially in a time like we are living in the culture where we need one another more than we have ever needed each other before. We are the minority in the culture. We are the cultural minority. Any, Pretty much any Christian is the cultural minority, and it's becoming increasingly so at this particular time in church history, it, particularly in North America. And so we're under extreme pressure from all around the culture. And so I just want to encourage encourage us, encourage preachers, encourage Christians of all stripes, fellow believers, let's love one another. It's just because somebody don't draw a line where we do, or just because somebody doesn't cover or somebody doesn't react in a certain situation the way we thought they they ought to. Let's have fervent charity toward one another. Let's allow love to cover a multitude of sins. Let's allow love and not division to dominate who we are, uh, who we are as as believers. Let's let the world see that. Let's let the culture see um, a community of Christians and believers who cover each other, who cover one another, who stand with one another, even when they don't live up to, to a perfect ideal. And this is a microcosm of the gospel. How did God love us? And how did God love us? How was the love of God manifested toward us? He loved us and that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. It was the love of God that covered a multitude of our sins. It was Christ's love, God's love through Christ on the cross that covered a multitude of our sins. And so so in covering the sins of others through love, it's a microcosm of the gospel. Let's live this. Let's believe this. Let's promote this. And so once again, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do. If you uh, haven't considered before supporting us, please take the opportunity uh, to check out the show notes and to con consider supporting the channel we love and appreciate every one of you that watching that that watch that are watching all right god bless you today i love you i got you covered do you got me covered are you covering your brothers and sisters in christ go cover them today let them know that you have them covered <laughs>